you welcome to my channel and today i have another theatre vlog for you so this is the vlog of when we went to see tina the tina turner musical at the old witch theatre on the west end uh, we went to see it on thursday the 27th of july and we went to a matinee showing which started at half two and we were sat in the stalls and it was a really good day so the vlog actually starts when we are heading for some lunch we go to the theatre cafe for lunch and then from there we walk to the old witch theatre which actually took a lot longer than i thought i thought the cafe was a bit closer than it was but we did manage to get to the theatre in time um and yeah it was really nice so yeah i hope you enjoyed this little vlog and the first thing you'll see will be us walk into the theatre cafe so yeah, i hope you do enjoy the vlog and there is a full review of the show at the end of the video as well and here i can see you just ahead of us is the theatre cafe which is where we're heading to now <laughs> arrived at the theatre cafe there wasn't very many tables left i wanted to get here for when it opened but lawrence was distracted so this is our table never seen this one i right, know we're gonna look at the menu and get some lunch here you can see from the spires to the piers of petersburg i can tell on that knee selling stolen souvenirs of petersburg food has finally arrived it did take over half an hour for the food to come but it's come now i got a cheese on my uh, toasty and lawrence has got it is pepperoni and chicken panini i might take a bite of that actually it's quite nice lawrence is still in the queue for cakes i think he's next in the queue <laughs> We didn't order at the same time, which we should have, but you know, I'm going to eat this now. Then we'll be heading to theatre in about 20 minutes. We also got a cake. Uh, we're going to share. We got this Victoria sponge and we got a lemon drizzle. I'm going to share it. How's your pinini? Yeah, nice. It's nice. Yeah, it looks quite nice. He's got, was it chicken? Is it chorizo or pepperoni? Chorizo. Chicken chorizo with like a sauce on it.
we've now finished at the theatre cafe and we're just walking to the Aldrich Theatre to see Tina Turner the Musical. That is our matinee for today. Just heading past Frozen now. Down here, isn't it? Yeah, so just walking past Theatre Royal Drury Lane where Frozen is. So here's the first where Mum and Mia is. Where that goes wrong. I just need to find the right one for us. By the time we get into this one, I think we'll just go take our seats. It's now it's ten past. Here we go, we found it. It's just back up here. Then you see the pepper. Ah, there it is. So we're just queuing up now to get in. It's quite a big queue, but I don't think it'll take too long. It does seem to be going down quite quick. We'll probably get a picture outside the first when we come out, can't we? Well, we'll oh, we're not going to have time, are we? Oh, well, we might have to do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. We are around here tomorrow, so. Tina, the Tina Turner musical. So we are in the Aldrich Theatre now, we are in the stalls. So we're going to say we're on row U, seat 7 and 8 I think it is. Got a feeling that there's women's sweats on the opposite side. We've done this in every theatre, we've sat on the wrong side. I always sit on the wrong side. Every, every, every one so far. So we're just in the theatre now. So we're on row U. So yeah, we're row U, seat seven and eight. So right at the back. Oh, yeah. yeah, here. So you've got the overhang. So here we go, we're in, row, we're in seat 7 and 8. So there is a bit of an overhang, but I think I read that it's only you know, the curtain call where she comes down the steps. And right. that's the only bit that you don't see. So that's a good view. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. Very nice. Where did you go? Single, I'm single, that's the part. Alright. Anyway, we're in our seats now. I'm on seat seven, you and Kate. Yeah. Um, the view's not actually bad. There is an overhang from the circle. Uh, but I don't think we'll miss too much, but I'll let you know at the end of the show if it makes too much difference. But we paid, what, £50 for these seats, is it? I think so. Yeah, 
I'll check and I'll let you know. But yeah, I'll show you the view. No, not for this one. Uh, I'll let you know in the interval what the view is like and everything. But yeah, it's just starting in about 10 minutes, so I'll go and put you away and I'll tell you a bit more about it in the interval. I'll just quickly show you the view as well from the seat. So this is our view. You can see it here. So it is now the interval and it is so good. Really, really enjoying it. You, Lauren? I'm loving this. This is probably better than the week. Three days ago, I think. Yeah, it is really, this really is good. Probably, probably my top five. Oh, is it going to go in your top five? Is it? It is, yeah. I've got my top five. Oh, that's going to go in top five. So, yeah. Obviously, we'll tell you more at the end of the show. Well, we might have to wait till tonight. We will we'll eventually do a review. But, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. So I've just come up to the surface so you can see what the view is like from here. Okay, so I'm just going to head back down now because the show's going to start in a few minutes. So we'll get back to it in the show.
Ken is finished now. That was an absolutely amazing show. Hi, so we are now back from the theatre. We thought we'd tell you a bit about the show. Um, we've got a programme. I, I can't remember how much they are, were. I think in £8. But the brochures were 10 something I like that. Between, eight, between eight, 8 and 10, I think, eight and ten I think, I think it was 18. Asia. And we also got a magnet, and again, I can't remember. I'm just going to focus on the magnet or not. There we go. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much that was. I'm, I'm guessing they're usually around seven pounds, between usually between seven and twelve, depending on the show. But just um, tell you a bit about Tina. Loris is going to tell you because he really, really enjoyed this show. I did as well, but he really, really. Enjoyed I really enjoyed it. this. Gave me like Clay Mears went Miss Saigon. It's for me. It was up, up there with those yeah. top ones for watching it. The shivers and the story, the songs, all pretty amazing. The story I was quite. It doesn't hold back some of that hard stuff that you you get. You, you might get a bit shocked from watching when you see it happen on the stage. You'll, you'll get a, a bit. Did they really just do that? Yeah, because like this domestic abuse. Domestic abuse. Violence. Yeah. So they, they've done it really well. I didn't shy away. I didn't try to cross over. So I was impressed with that. I like the story. As it's true. That's what I like about it as well. Yeah. It's gripping and I'm hooked on it. I want her to succeed, succeed yeah. and get out. Of that situation mm. she's in. Sons, amazing. I love what Tina Turner Sons. How they're done, are pretty good. And how the I stages. Thought, yeah, I thought how they slotted them into the story yeah. was really good. I really liked how yeah. they walked out into the story. Mm. I liked the staging, how it's done. Yeah, I was quite impressed with the set and how they did mm. it. They used screens as well, some parts yeah. as well, but the way they, they used them, I thought they used them really well. Mm -hmm. And they got contraptions of how the bit different sets come up mm. it was very good there's some good solo songs that kind of hell off you feel that make the character develop and move the story on not just there just because there's a teen torn song it's there for a reason mm. yeah. i felt with the songs yeah, true like some jukebox musicals they're just shoving song in the shoving song. Genre. yeah but this one they're all placed they're well. all placed part of the story yeah. for me to make the story go mm. forward and it's complicated. Some standout moments for me in that. Yeah, I could be a private dancer. That song, mm -hmm. how that worked, it's pretty good for me. Yeah. And uh, that bit, what was which song was it? Where the people stood at the back. Hero. We don't need yeah, no hero. Yeah, another hero. Uh, we were sat at the back of the. I'm oh, here by the way. We were sat at the back of the stall. stalls and she was singing on stage and then, and he then heard that chorus came. Chorus singing at the back. Everyone, we turned course. around and they were all stood behind us. Behind us the ensemble. Yeah, ensemble. So ensemble. if you were in the circle you wouldn't have seen it. No. Because we were at the back of the stalls, you just heard them all from Big behind. Big point. Yeah. yeah. I thought you think it's people singing. But then they turned around and we saw yeah, the ensemble the there. Stood behind us. Well, it was good. That, that was song was good. Yeah, that was really good. Really enjoyed that one. Yeah, costumes, loved it. Loved it. Back assembly. Yeah. They did all their parts great. The performer, I have to give a shout out. That's absolutely amazing. So, yeah. Which one? Playing Tina Turner. It seems to be two main ones, so they seem to alternate. They must do because I'm guessing it's quite a serious. But that, that voice, yeah, the, yeah. voice and the songs, it's they have Pretty, to yeah. It'd be too much for one person to do that. constantly afternoons and evenings. Mm. But Hawk oh, Karis, I pronounce that right, Anderson. Anderson. Correct me if I'm wrong. Karis, Anderson. I was blown away by her performance as Tina Turner. From yeah, she was amazing. Her, comparing her to Tina Turner herself, I thought she did a very good justice mm. to her songs. Oh. We're all I was very impressed by her. Yeah, she was very, very good. And just as a, a performer herself, nailed everything for me. Couldn't fault her or anything I couldn't. Yeah, I agree. And the one playing uh, Ike Turner. Um, how, how should I pronounce that? Oh, Kinsey. I'm probably pronounce this one. 
Akizi. Akizi more more. More more. Him as the husband was very most impressive. He did that part very well as being the fiddle. He did uh, very well. I was impressed by him as well. I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a five star show for us. It's really, really good. Don't say I'll tell you five star. It's up with my man's and Miss Saigon. I would put five star for me. Mm, yeah, it was really good. So yeah, we've had a had a great time and we're really tired now, so we're gonna head to bed. Uh, Hi, so it's now actually been a few months since I went to go and see Tina, the Tina Turner musical in the West End. So I thought it's about time I gave you a little review of the show. So we went to see Tina, the Tina Turner musical on Thursday the 27th of July 2023 and we went to the matinee performance which started at 2.30. So if you don't know, Tina Turner the musical plays at the Aldwych Theatre on the West End and the Aldwych Theatre is a really pretty theatre actually. Um, the foyer, as you come in the foyer is actually really small, it's a really small foyer so it does get quite crowded in the foyer. Um, so if you want to like have a proper look around it and see all the merch and stuff I suggest you probably get there early before it gets quite busy because by the time we got there because we got there a bit late um not too late but later than I like to be there and it was really really busy in the foyer I did it was really crowded I did find it a bit overcrowded for me and it took me a while to get to the merch stand and be able to look at the merch properly um so yeah, I would suggest you get there early. But the theatre is a really lovely theatre. It's all sort of, it's sort of green and gold and cream, and it just looks really ornate. And it's, it's just really, really pretty theatre. And they do have a few screens around, which do have the cast list on. I think they've got one next to the box office, which is in the foyer, and that shows the cast list. And it also shows the merch that they sell as well on there. Um, so it's worth looking out for the screens so you can see what the cast is because it does change quite a lot the cast because they do actually have two um tinas which alternate so it's best to make sure you check the cast list so you know which tina is performing at your show so the runtime for this show is around two hours and 50 minutes act one is around one hour and 20 minutes then there's a 20 minute interval and then act two is around one hour and 10 minutes so it's quite a long show. So there was quite a bit of merch for this show. Um, it was quite hard to see it. Like I said, it was quite crowded in the foyer. And I think that was the only place they were selling merch. Um, the Aldrich Fitch is actually quite small. Um, so there's not a lot of places where they could sell the merch. So I think that is the only place that I could see that was selling the merch. So it can get quite crowded. Like I said, it's probably best to get there early if you want to have a proper look at it. But they do sell things like t-shirts, hoodies, cap, mug, magnet, key ring, um, they had a necklace, uh, an enamel pin, uh, they had a few different Tina Turner CDs, a few different Tina Turner books, I think there was a tote bag as well, so there's quite a bit of merch. I did obviously pick up the magnet, if you know me I collect a bit of magnet, so I think this was £6. I also picked up, as I showed you before, the programme. Oh, upside down. I picked up the programme. They do also do a souvenir brochure. The souvenir brochures are £10, but they don't have the cast information in them. It's just a lot of like um, production shots from the show, whereas this, this has the cast list in it. However, I'm not sure how much this is. Uh, it wasn't on the price list, but I'm guessing it's between six and eight pounds. That's how much they usually are. So I'm guessing it was probably between that. But it does feel like a really good quality program. The paper is really thick. So yeah, I picked that up. So for this show, we were sat in the stalls. And for this theatre, you actually enter the theatre at the circle level. So to get to the stalls, you have to go down. So it's sort of like basement level I'm not sure but you have to go down to get to the store so you have to go down some stairs and we were sat on row U seats seven and eight and we paid 40 pounds each for those tickets and they are classed as restrictive view tickets and this is because of the overhang from the circle it does actually cut off the top of the stage 
and there's not actually a lot that you miss most of it is not nothing really is done high up except for the end scenes um when tina's doing her concert she stands at the top of the stairs and her head actually gets cut off you can't see her head and also when she's doing the um curtain call she stands on the stairs and walks down but that is the only bit that gets cut off the whole of the show is fine so it is just that bit which isn't really important bit it is like it's just the curtain call and the very very end of the concert scene so i think for the price and the view that we got i think it we we it was a good view and i'm glad we sat there um our other option for that price was at the very back of the um i think it was a dress circle and um i just think being in the stalls you get a bit more of the atmosphere especially when they're doing the concert scene at the end um i just feel like you get a bit more atmosphere in the store so i personally would have would pick these seats over the ones higher up for that price and we were actually really pleased with our view i thought we got a really good view you will be able to see our view from the video so you can see um what you think of that but i think for 40 pounds it was a pretty good view so if you don't know anything about tina the tina turner musical i'll just tell you a little bit about it so the show is a jukebox musical which features the music of tina turner and it tells the story of tina's life from her humble beginnings in nutbush tennessee to her transformation into a megastar so the show actually premiered in the old witch theatre back in 2018 that was its world premiere so it actually premiered here in the uk and it then went on to do a run in broadway um so it's nice that we actually got the show first so i personally didn't know much about tina's life before seeing the musical um obviously i've heard of tina turner i know of a few of her songs but i didn't really know anything about her life and after seeing this she has lived such a hard life she's such a strong woman i mean the things that she had to live through um obviously i'll tell you a little bit of the story of the show now but yeah it, it is a very good story but obviously a true story as well so it makes it that much more interesting so in act one we see young tina who was known then as anna may bullock so that is her her real name and so Anna May lived in Nutbush, Tennessee with her parents and her older sister and uh, Anna May's parents had a troubled relationship and after her mother was physically assaulted by her husband she actually leaves and she takes uh, Anna May's older sister Eileen with her however she actually leaves Anna May with her father and abandons her so Anna May ends up staying with her father however her father does eventually abandon her as well and she ends up getting raised by her grandmother so some years later Anna May's grandmother convinces her to go to Memphis to record an album and so she reunites with her mother and sister in St Louis so it's in it's in St Louis where she actually ends up meeting Ike Turner so if you don't know Ike Turner is ends up becoming Tina's husband and he is the one that um sort of creates the persona of Tina Turner and um creates the Ike and Turner review which was how Tina Turner started out. The show shows Anna May's sort of transformation into Tina Turner and also how Tina and Ike's relationship evolve into this tangled web of jealousy um infidelity and domestic violence so act one actually ends with a vicious fight between ike and tina which leaves tina beaten or and she's all bloody and bruised and this was the final straw, straw for tina and she actually ends up um, plucking up the courage to actually leave ike and um she ends up running away from him and that is the end of act one so in act two we see tina who is now divorced from ike she's in a lot of debt and she's living in las vegas so to make money she is singing in bars and clubs in the evenings and then in the day she is doing cleaning jobs 
So no record labels want to sign Tina and Ike has claimed copyright on all the songs that they perform together in like in the Ike Tina review. So when Tina goes to drop off a demo at Capitol Records she actually ends up meeting Roger Davies and he is a young producer from Australia and he's actually a big fan of Tina Turner and he actually eventually becomes Tina's manager. So Roger arranges for Tina to go to London and um, do a recording session there. Whilst there they put on a showcase for Capitol Records. The showcase goes well but the record label end up rejecting Tina due to age, gender and race. So this leads Roger to end up quitting the record label and he actually decides to promote Tina himself back in the US. So back in the US, Tina successfully performs in New York and she also has a big hit with What's Love Got To Do With It and this results in Capitol Records begging her to sign with them. So the show actually ends with Tina getting ready to perform at a massive concert in Brazil where 18,000 people will be watching her and at that concert she performs her hit song The Best and then after that there is a big encore and the cast perform Nutbush City Limits and Proud Mary and it's sort of like a little mini concert they invite everyone to get up off off their seats to, and to sing and dance and join in so the end of the show is like a mini concert and it's it's really good it's really exciting and it's really enjoyable so I really love that little bit at the end where they get everyone up it was really fun so the cast for this show were all absolutely excellent they were all outstanding um the ensemble cast were fantastic the dancing was amazing and yeah the whole cast were fantastic of course I definitely have to um, mention the person playing Tina. Now as I mentioned before there's actually two actresses that play Tina and they alternate throughout the week. Obviously this role is a really tough role. Um, Tina is literally on stage for the most of the show. She sings almost all the songs, she does, she's in practically all the dance numbers and it's a really tough role to perform. It's very it's very high energy you've got to have a lot of stamina for it and not only do you have to do all the singing which is really tough vocally and um, all the dancing but also it's a really emotional roller coaster this show and obviously they've got to act that out every night so it can, I can see how it can be try a strain on an individual to perform that many shows in a week so that is why they split between two cast members. So for our performance we had Keris Anderson and she was just outstanding she was so good she really embodied Tina with her mannerisms the gravelly voice and her dance moves she was really good at getting across Tina's vulnerable side but also showing um, Tina's incredible strength as well so yeah I thought she did a fantastic job um, another cast member that I need to mention is Ocasi Morrow uh, as Ike Turner. Now Ike is quite a difficult role, obviously he's not a very well liked character um, and yeah I can see he's being quite a difficult character to play but um, Ocasi did an amazing job and he gave a fantastic performance and his performance was really believable. And he was really able to show the character's nasty and vile side. And he really made the audience dislike him. So he did a really good job. So the set for this show was good. It did rely quite heavily on the projector screen that it used. Which was like a large screen that they had at the back of the stage. But it was used well um, in order to like transport us to the different locations. I thought it worked really well. And I thought the... Um, Transitions between scenes were quite slick and worked and was quite fast um, transitioning to the different scenes. Um, so yeah, I thought the staging and the set worked really well. Also, the lighting was stunning and the costumes I thought were really nice and definitely looked like some of the uh, costumes Tina wore um, when doing her concerts and also the other costumes look right for the time period in which they were set. Obviously it moved through two different time periods and the costumes all fit in the time periods which they needed to be in. So yeah, I thought the costumes were all really nice. And all that, the staging, the lighting, the costumes really helped um, 
to create the atmosphere needed for the show. Another thing I need to mention is the choreography by Anthony Van Last. I thought it was so good. It was such high energy. Um, I don't know how they managed to do that choreography eight times a week, but oh, it was such high energy and the ensemble did an amazing job with it. I really enjoyed all the choreography in the show. So now it's probably a good place to go through the program we can see um who else was in here i think there was a couple of understudies on um i've got it written down so i can uh, check but yeah let's go through the program okay so this is the front cover of the program i really like this logo i think it's really nice it just says old rich theater on the front and like i said this is really good quality the paper on this is really thick and glossy so it's a really nice uh program got a really nice picture there of the front of the theatre it's really nice and then it's just got welcome to the Aldrich theatre so then it has Aldrich through the years so it just tells you some information about the, the theatre throughout the years I think it tells you different shows that have been on um, so yeah the show before Tina was actually a beautiful the Carol King musical so yeah it's nice to see that and see what shows have been on at that theatre then we have this doing our bit from the environment uh, and it has a bit on the Nederlander organization which is the which are the people who own the theatre and then it's got some information that shows that on at the Nederlander Theatres. So it looks like they own the Adelphi Theatre, the Dominion Theatre. Yeah, and those are the theatres that they seem to own. And then these are, are the ones that they own on Broadway. So the Gershwin, Lena Horn, Lunfortine, Marquise, Miskoff, Nederlander, Niels. Simon and Richard Rogers theatres. So it looks like here we have some rehearsal shots. So it says capturing the energy in the rehearsal room as the cast portray the untold story of the astronomical rise to fame of Tina Turner. And then we have the cast biographies so Carys Anderson uh, is Tina Turner she was a Tina Turner for our performance so her theatre credits include so she was originally an I kept in Tina uh, the musical so she must have started out as an I kept um, she's also played Diana Ross in uh, the Motown musical and it says in 2011, Chris joined the girl band Stooshi. And after a year in development, they broke onto the UK music scene with the release of their first pop single, Love Me. There you go, some stuff that she's done. So the other person who plays Tina Turner is Alicia Paul Moses. Um, obviously, we didn't get to see her performance, uh, but her credits include... Whitney in Queen of the Night. So then playing Ike Turner, we have Akizi Morrow. And like I said, he was fantastic. Uh, his credits include Moon on a Rainbow Shore, To Kill a Mockingbird, Damned by Despair, Romeo and Juliet. So those are just some things that he's done. Then playing Phil Spector slash Terry Britain, we had Mark Anderson, and his theatre credits include George Kikay's, Kikay's Ally, Allegiance, School of Rock, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Book of Mormon, uh, Legally Blonde, and Mary Poppins. So he had done quite a lot of things. So playing Eileen Bullock uh, slash an I kept is Vanessa. Dummity, but we actually didn't have her, we actually had an understudy on, so we had Amara Campbell, um, but I'll just tell you uh, Vanessa's theatre credit, so they include 
Whitney, Queen of the Night, Tina, What's Love Got to Do With It, Beauty and the Beast, and those are some of the things that she's done. So playing Gran Georgiana, we had Irene Martel Forrester. Uh, her theatre credits include Nine Night, Nanny in Before the Party, Mama Morton in Chicago, and Sadie in the Rise and Fall of Little Voice. There's just some things that she's done. So Jonathan Carlton usually plays Erwin Batch, but we actually had an understudy on, so we had Samuel J. Weir playing the part. Um, but I'll just tell you some of Jonathan's theatre credits. Ordinary Days, Kinky Boot and Pippin. So playing Richard Bullock we had Earl Gregory. Uh, his credits include Into the Woods, Kinky Boots, Cat, Vita and Joseph in Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamco in South Africa. So yeah, those are some of the things that he's done. Then playing Roger Davies, we had Harry Harrington. Um, his theatre credits include King Lear, All the Women Who Thought They Were Mad, The New World Order, and The Memory Place. So that's just some things. He, that's just some things he's done. We then had Emma Hatton playing Rhonda Graham. Her credits include Alphabet in Wicked. Eva Perron in Invita. She's played Grizabelle in Cats. And yeah, so she's done some good roles there. We then had Jairus McClanna playing Raymond Hill. So it says his first job was a swing in The Lion King. Uh, and uh, Tina is his second job in The West End. So we then had... Carol Stennett playing Zelma Bullock, um, who is Tina's mother, and her credits include Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat, Death of a Salesman, The Bodyguard, uh, Little Shop of Horrors, uh, The Lion King. So she has done she's done a lot of theatre work. Then had Lauren Allen as an ensemble member. Toral Barrett, Barrett Wallace was an ensemble slash Ronnie. Morgan Broom is ensemble slash an I kept. So Amara Campbell was playing um, Eileen Bullock, uh, Tina Turner's sister in our performance, but she is usually an ensemble uh, slash I kept member. Um, and her credits include. Matilda the Musical on its UK tour, uh, Dream Girls at the Savoy, uh, Little Inez in Hairspray, so there's some of the first shows she's been in. We then have Abola Funchil, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name, but she was an ensemble and an I kept. We then had Joey James, who was an ensemble slash Craig. Uh, Thomas Sutcliffe played the carpenter slash Martin Weir. We then have Richard Apia Sapong, who was a swing slash fight captain. Jenna Bonner was a swing. Anna Cardoso swing. Junior Delius swing. Livy Evans swing slash dance captain. Ewan Grant was a swing. Imogen Rose Hart was swing slash assistant dance captain. Llewellyn J Jamal was a swing. Amy Punter swing. Ellie Seaton swing. Samuel J. Weir is usually a swing, but for our performance, he was on as Erwin Batch. And his theatre credits include the Caucasian Chalk Circle, Titanic, uh, and Spring Awakening. So those are just some of his theatre credits. 
So we then have the ch children cast. So for young anime Bullock, we actually had Shania Abrahams, which is this girl here. So Shania is 10 years old. And this is her stage debut. And she was really, really good. I thought she did a really good job. Other girls who play the part are Sakimi Okato and Cheyenne Onowu. So playing young Aline, we had Esme Robinson. She's actually played young Corset in Les Mis the Concert at the Somdime Theatre. And she's also been a juvenile dancer in Cinderella at the Harlequin Theatre. That's some things that she's done. Other girls that play the part are Adisa Richards and Eden Butcher. So playing young Clade, we, we actually had Rayhan Kufaro Grant, who doesn't appear to be in the cast list so um yeah uh he we had him but he's not in here uh but other boys that play the park are aj aborala aiden bale and philip camus so we then have the music credit so these are songs which are featured in the show so we have a fool in love better be good to me be tender with my ba with me baby. Disco Inferno. Don't turn around. Higher. I can't stand the rain. I don't want to fight. It's gonna work out fine. Let's stay together. Matchbox. Nutbush City Limits. Open Arms. Private Dancer. Proud Mary. River Deep Mountain High. Rocket Eighty Eight. Shake a Tail Feather, She Made My Blood Run Cold, Simply the Best, Sound of Mystic Law, Tonight, We Don't Need Another Hero, and What's Love Got To Do With It. So here we have the cast list. And the understudies list. And then the orchestra. And then here is the creative team. And it says here the show runs for 2 hours and 45 minutes, including one interval, which is different than what I read. I read it ran for 2 hours and 50 minutes. So, And then here we have the production team. We've got a picture of Tina here. And then we've got the creative team biographies. And I think that's pretty much all that's in here. Um, I don't think there's anything else. And you've got your producer's biographies. With thanks to, so I'm assuming these are the sponsors. And you've got some more rehearsal shots. Uh, you've got your production credits. And then this shows you some of the merch that they do. And then some theatre information. And then restoring our theatre. So some information on the restoration work that's gone on at the Old Witch Theatre. Got an advert there for Greece. And you've got Meet the Team. And then it's got this thing about every woman should be safe from abuse. And then uh, an advert there. And that is the programme. So I thought Tina, the Tina Turner musical, was fantastic. It's probably one of the best Dukes Box musicals 
that I've seen. I thought the way they have used the songs and fit them into the show uh, has been done really well and they help to tell the story. They've not just been shoehorned in uh, anywhere just to get as many songs in as possible. They've actually wrote the story really well so that the songs fit in well with the story. And I also think the arrangements of the songs have also been done really well as well. So I think the show features about 23 of Tina's songs or songs that Tina has sung. One of my favourite performances is probably the performance of Private Dancer, which is the opening of the second act. Really enjoyed that one. I thought it was sung really well and it was it was a really nice scene. Uh, but other highlights included Proud Mary and uh, The Best or Simply The Best. I really enjoyed those uh, numbers as well. So I found the story of Tina's life really engrossing and the show is just an emotional roller coaster which is raw, heartwarming but it doesn't hold back on some of the harder parts of Tina's life and so it features a lot of strong language and has some graphic scenes of domestic violence. So for me Tina is a five star show and I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. It's a show that I would happily go and see again um, it was it was just really good and I really hope that it does tour soon because I'm pretty sure it's toured in America so we must be due a tour in the UK soon and uh, I would definitely go and see it again if it tours so yeah I hope you have enjoyed this little vlog and review video of our trip to see Tina the musical if you do enjoy vlog and review videos then do subscribe to my channel because I do lots of them on this channel I do have a couple more to do from my London trip I have Matilda the musical I also have uh, the book of Mormon to do as well but I also see lots and lots of regional theatre so if you'd like to see any of those and like I said please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it'll be noted as soon as any of those go up so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this little video if you have please give it a like don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you again soon bye